So I've traced the outlines of this particular pattern piece, but there are some other markings that you'll want to transfer to your pattern piece. Um, there are little notches, and you'll want to mark those. When you're sewing your garment, you're going to match. It's a way for you to match up pattern pieces. When two pattern pieces go together, the notches help you find you know, where they go together. Sometimes, you know, if you have a very long, like say a side seam, there will be a notch on the side because that's a long expanse of fabric. Whereas if you just started pinning at the top and you went all the way to the bottom, it might get a little off. So you've got a, a place that you can, in the middle somewhere, where you can match it up and go from there out to each side seam. Other places like these are armhole spots. And just for your information, a single notch, so, so you'll see this is a double notch, and this is a single one. Single notch would almost always indicate that that is the front of the pattern on an armhole. The double notch will be on the back. All right, so I've, I've marked the notches. The other thing that's important is the straight of grain, okay? Sometimes I make a little mark there and there so that I can see, really see it well. I'm gonna mark this. We'll talk about grain lines in another video, but basically the straight of grain runs lengthwise with your fabric. Like this is how the fabric comes off the bolt. And the way it comes off the bolt, the raw edges that were uh, on the machine, that's a selvage, and the straight of grain runs parallel to that. The cut edge will be the cross grain. So when you have a pattern piece and it has a grain line on it, um, unless it says it's a separate kind of grain line, like bias, then you want to line that up with the edge of your fabric when it's laid out. So if I th I've marked the grain line, I've marked notches. Um, it's probably also a good idea for you to transfer this, the pattern number in, the, uh, and in terms of this is style arc, and I, I don't know, oh, actually they name them. Independent patterns name their patterns often. And I thought that was kind of funny when I first started looking at it because I was used to the big four and they just have you know, a series of four numbers. But what's really kind of fun about having names to these independent patterns is that you can find them easily online and in social media. So this, uh, I have, a dress here that I've taught a class and it's called the Faro dress. And so if you're on Instagram, you can just do the hashtag Faro dress and up will come, actually in that case, hundreds of examples of people who have made the Faro dress. And if that had just been a number, like a four, di uh, four digit number, then it's not only not as personable, but it would not be as easy to find. So I think that's one of the reasons that they do it. So I will put down the company name, if there's a name, this one is the Andrea Vest, so I will write that down. And then it's, um, this is piece 12, the pieces are numbered. And then it would often tell you, ex you know, what to cut out. One of fabric, one of interfacing, might say two, but you will just transfer that information. So once you have finished tracing all of the patterns, they're like this, then you're gonna cut those out and that will become your pattern that you're going to lay on your fabric.